Variety Weekly News Podcast. Welcome to BWN Podcast, also known as Variety Weekly News Podcast. I'm your host, Rodney Variety. Uh, I got my glasses on, I do. And just to let you guys know, I got an appointment with my eye doctor this week, right? So I'm looking forward to hearing how much my vision is deteriorating. Yes, yes, can't wait for it. Now, uh, I'm actually keeping my um, appointment just because um, I want to get new contacts. That's the only reason I'm going, just for the new contacts. The new contact prescription more. Uh, then you know the the prescriptions only last one year. That's it. They're only good for a year, and then you got to go back. So it's kind of like, all right, see you next year. That's pretty much all I do. Now, I had a question. I had a question for people out here who have perfect vision. What is it like to have perfect vision? So you just wake up every day just seeing everything clearly. You know exactly where you are and the time. Hmm. Must be nice. Hmm. Just a must be a nice hmm. You know, uh, you, you if you have perfect vision, you don't know the struggle of waking up in a foreign place hoping you didn't sleep on your glasses and snap them in half. Yeah, which would cost at least $100 to replace the frame. Yeah, depending on where you're going. So I just had a question for people who, people with uh, perfect vision. I, I, I don't even remember what that was like. I think I had perfect vision at one point in my life. I think I got contacts. No, no, no. I got glasses when I was second grade. Second grade? Something like that. I don't even remember what it was like to see well before that. Now, I got to tell you guys about this because this, this happened and I, um, I can't let it go. I can't let it go. Yeah, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm working on trying to let it go, but I can't. Okay, this is what happened. Three months ago, I went to a local restaurant and ordered a hamburger. Yeah, nothing strange about that. Totally normal. I asked for ketchup. The bartender said, no problem. Then I asked for mustard, and the bartender laughed like, <laughs> and, and said, we don't have mustard here. How dare they not have mustard? And and the laugh, they laughed at me like my request was weird. Like, that was a weird request. Like, what restaurant in the U.S. serves hamburgers but doesn't have mustard? Like, at least Dijon or brown, if not regular yellow mustard, right? I, I, I'm never going back to this restaurant. That's what I've determined. Anybody who laughs at me for asking for mustard, I can't be in the same room as them. And the food was okay. It wasn't even great. It was overpriced. That was the other thing. It was overpriced. And they don't have mustard? You serve a hamburger? Yo, can somebody get at me if you know anybody who serves hamburgers but doesn't have mustard and laughs at the people who ask for mustard? That's like a standard. That's a standard. Ketchup, mustard, and mayo. If if it mayo, if you if you like mayo, if you like mayo, which brings me to my other point. Whoa! Look at that transition. Look at that transition. Yeah, that's a transition. Okay. How old were you when you found out Miracle Whip and Hellman's mayonnaise didn't taste the same? How old were you? Huh? I was in middle school. Uh, so this is what happened. I had a bologna. I mean, I had my bologna, also known as bologna, bread, and Hellman's mayo. And I was like, good to go, ready to make this sandwich. I put the Hellman's on the bread, right? Then I put the bologna on there. Then I took a bite, and I spit it out. I was like, what? This is supposed to be sweet. Apparently, Hellman's mayo and Miracle Whip, they taste different. Miracle Whip is like candy mayo. That's what it is. I didn't know that. I, I I was so disappointed. I had a whole jar of mayo sitting in the fridge for a year because I was like, I, that's not what I bargained for. That's not what I thought it was. You know, it's like I was expecting a sweet mayonnaise, a sweet Miracle Whip. You know, I guess Miracle Whip isn't even technically mayonnaise, right? Technically, it's just Miracle Whip. That's that's what it is. But yeah, I didn't know that. Did any of you know that that Miracle Whip when you were a kid? Did you know that mayo and Miracle Whip weren't the same? You know, well, I found out and. um that that was the, that's the wonders of cooking, everyone. The wonders of cooking. That's when you really start to learn what it takes to make things taste good and the importance of ingredients. You can't just kind of be like, ah, it's similar. No, it needs to be what exactly what it is. Now, I want to talk about this. Dyslexia. I am not dyslexic. Let me put that out there. That is not me. I am not dyslexic. This <laughs> maybe I am. I don't even know. I am not dyslexic. What is dyslexia? It is a learning disorder that is neurological in origin and usually manifests itself 
as a per with a person having difficulty reading despite having intelligence. Which uh, the difficulty in reading is separate from reading difficulties caused by hearing or vision problems or by insufficient un, insufficient learning, uh, inf, insufficient teaching. Okay, so th that's what dyslexia is, right? But get this. This is the thing. Alexia, A-L-E-X-I-A, is when someone who previously could read loses their ability to read. It's called Alexia. What do we got on our iPhone? It's called Alexa. We are losing our ability to gather information because we are using Alexa. We, it's, it's happening. It's happening to us. It, everybody's becoming alexic in a way. Hmm? How about that? I coined that phrase. Alexic. Use it. Tell people. Ah, everybody's becoming alexic. Where'd you hear that? Variety Weekly News Podcast, also known as BWM Podcast Promo. Now, we don't even type anymore. You just ask Alexa. Yo, Alexa, uh, is Mayo and Miracle Whip the same? No, Rodney. It is not the same. They are not the same. They are completely different. You would have to be an idiot to think they were the same. <laughs> hey, Alexa, hey, no need to insult. Now, all right, here we go. On to the news, everyone. That's it. I hope you guys had a good week. I forgot to say that. Hope you had a good week. Thank you and thank you for tuning in. Uh, another great week. I had a great time. Uh, just, I don't know, doing whatever I do. But I had a good week. I hope you guys had a good week. Um, on to the news. Walmart has urged campfire evacuees to leave the tent city in one of its parking lots. The tent city is located in Chico, California, which is 10 minutes downhill from Paradise, California, where one of the fires is located. Uh, now, uh, it is now currently a makeshift village. It's not just a couple tents here and there. It's a village where people are, are because, of the tent, uh, because of the campfire, which is very sad. Um, Walmart posted signs with information about shelters and free bus rides to the shelters uh, so they could get people out of the lot. Along with uh, giving gas gift cards, money, and food. So Walmart, it seems like they are doing their part. But it also seems like they couldn't wait to kick people out to prepare for Black Friday. I think that announcement came on, uh, let's see, Thursday? <laughs> Upcoming reports of rain could... Uh, Make it unsafe conditions such as flooding or mudslides. So that's that. That might also be a reason they wanted people to leave. Um, but hopefully everybody gets gets to a safer place. Uh, wishing the best for all those people out there. In Pennsylvania, an owner of a Christmas tree stand collection at a count, which is at one thousand one hundred ninety seven Christmas tree stands, has broken the Guinness World Record, and he plans to continue to collect them. You know, more power to you. That's not something I would collect. I, I I don't even like collecting things. I guess the only thing I like to collect is um, I like DVDs or that's really it. I I, I stopped at DVDs. I, I know you like DVD. Yeah, DVDs is all. I never I never bought a Blu-ray player or a Blu-ray disc in my life. Like that's played I, that's played out, right? Is anybody even selling those? Is that like was that kind of like like uh, is that like the Sega Saturn of um of like movie? formats the blu-ray disc you know not a lot of people really dealt with it you know people heard of it but nobody really bought it yeah i got dvds that's what i got now this guy is collecting christmas tree stands um yeah i never really heard of those uh christmas tree stands christmas let me try christmas tree stands until about five years ago when i bought a real christmas tree so before that i even have i had no idea uh, and the tr tr christmas tree stand is actually really important um, mine didn't have any designs, uh, at all. Did yours? Did yours? Do you have some? Do you get real trees? I don't mind a plastic one, actually. I don't mind a plastic one. I like a plastic one. Plastic ones are nice, you know? Uh, no mess. Not a big deal. Maybe a couple things fall off, but, like, a real tree, that thing, you better have a vacuum. You better have a vacuum, a broom. It's, like, a whole issue if you have a real tree. Like, you gotta take care of the tree like you're trying to keep the tree alive. Like, you gotta keep that tree alive? What? Nah, I'm getting plastic. Plastic. Yeah. A Tennessee resident mistook his fire alarm for a movie sound effect, but eventually managed to escape his home safely. I've never been in an actual fire, ladies and gentlemen. All I know is stop, drop, and roll. I would probably just fall and start coughing. You know what I mean? Because people think, oh, yeah, if, if, if this happens, I, I've been trained. I know exactly what to do. Anybody who's ever been in a really crazy situation knows that everything is different when the actual stressful situation occurs. Your heart stops. 
You just you're just staring. You're looking. You're trying to see if if what you think is happening is actually happening. And by the time something uh, needs to be done, you you're either uh, still frozen or you fell down. That's generally how it goes. You'd be like, I, 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 is this is this you know? I don't know if anybody's ever seen somebody choking on a steak in a restaurant. That is actually very scary. I mean, you freeze up. You know, I don't know if anybody's ever seen somebody pass out, just pass out randomly. And that is also very scary. You really don't know what to do. Should I move them? Should I not move them? Should I start CPR? Should I call 911? There's a lot of things that race through your head. And, uh, you know, even with the best training, it is difficult to know exactly what to do. An employee at a Michigan steakhouse who rode his bike to work was gifted by his co-workers a Ford F-150 truck. Rides his bike to work, which takes about 20 minutes a day. Uh, no, 20 minutes to get there. Uh, it's really a kind deed of his co-workers, you know, to do that. I, I don't know anybody who could afford to pitch in to buy someone a car. I don't know anybody who could do it. Not on the East Coast. Nah, not here. Everybody's, everybody's struggling in the East Coast. Nobody's pitching in. It's got to be in the Midwest where people got just money to throw away. The best I know co-workers to do, maybe a, uh, uh, the best they would do is a gift card to Best Buy. You know, that's as good as it gets, you know. And, and and you better not think that gift card has more than fifty dollars on it, cause it doesn't. Okay, <laughs> you, you what do you think you're gonna get with that? Yeah, uh, not a lot, not that not that much at Best Buy. Oh, right, you know what? They got some sales going on. They might, they might. <laughs> I'm thinking on the mic. Oh, you know what? Maybe they could, guys. They got some nice things at Best Buy. Anyways, London has banned junk food advertising on public trans- transportation in an attempt to tackle childhood obesity. This. Ban starts February 25th, 2019. It covers advertising for foods high in fat, salt, and sugar. And it looks like there's good reason for London to do this because London has some of the highest child obesity rates in Europe uh, with close to 40% of the children aged 10 to 11 overweight or obese. Luckily, I've never had to deal with this myself personally. I don't know how it feels. I don't know what it's like to feel like you need to lose weight to be accepted by society. I don't. But I do know it's always good to try to make things healthier for people and in any city you live in. So great work, London. I think this is a great step in a healthy direction. Go Unite is a business that organizes date nights for large groups of couples and provides childcare services. It's located in Billings, Billings, Montana. One planned date each month where uh, in the area of Billings. Okay, couples and singles can sign up. And uh, let me just say this. I know a cult uh, when I hear it, and I know what's going to go down in Billings, Montana. In about five years, yeah, give it five years, and there will be a story about everyone was forced to wear the same shoes and drink from a gauntlet. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, you know, I did a meet meetup. Uh, it was actually fun. It was mini golfing. And that was one time three years ago. So <laughs> I guess that's how much fun it was. But, yeah, it, 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 it's nice to meet people you may, you may have never met. And you know what? If you're into, you know, doing fun things, you don't know how to meet people, meetup isn't a bad way. Meetup is actually kind of cool. It takes the stress and the awkwardness away of, like, trying to see what you could do with someone that you don't even know, you know? You're like, oh, you like this? I like this? Okay. It, it is nice. So there's um, there's meetup. <laughs> All right. University of Oregon scientists found, that, uh, found the first... Conf- Oh, took to number seven for me to start over. University of Oregon scientists found the first confirmed dinosaur in Oregon. It's a toe bone, and it's estimated at 103 million years old. Well, I guess there weren't a lot of dinosaurs uh, in uh, Oregon because uh, I don't know why. I think, oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. Let me not say I don't know why. I know why because that area apparently was under a lot of water uh, during that time. So, um... So I guess wouldn't there be a lot of uh, 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 sea creatures in that area, or maybe they floated away? Maybe they floated away. I th- that's what I, that's what I'm going with. They floated away before the the land dried up. Siblings united through DNA testing enjoyed their first Thanksgiving together. Uh, yeah, uh, two sisters. Uh, it was in Utah. In Utah, two sisters had DNA testing and found out they had the same mother. They contacted each other uh, on Facebook and. Um, yeah, now they're friends, I guess. Now they're friends. Yeah, same mother. Question for you is, have you done DNA testing? Are you afraid of what you might find out? I have no plans on doing DNA testing. Only because I literally, I literally went to the village, the village is where I'm from in Ghana last month. I did. I know exactly where I'm from. And, you know, 
uh, how far back? Pretty far back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I know my history. I know my 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 source. Um, and it's a comforting feeling to know that uh, Ghana is in West Africa for anybody who doesn't know. If you didn't know, you know now. If you don't know, now you know. International auction house Bonhams has canceled its upcoming sale of rhino products amid pressure from environmental groups. It was to take place next week in Hong Kong, right? And more than 20 antique rhino horns, a vase, hairpin, pouring vessel, pouring vessel, and drinking cups were on going to be uh, auctioned off. And now uh, the bar, uh, now now Bonhams will bar rhino horn items from its auction. Um, and uh, this is actually due to Wild Aid Petition. A Wild Wild Aid is an organization, I guess, they try to help protect uh, wild animals. Due to a Wild Aid Petition that was signed by 10,000 people. So that's why they stopped it, and that's why they're barring rhino horn items from auction at their place. Now, how much do rhino horn items actually go for, would you ask? Because, you know, why would we know? We don't, we're not those people who buy those things. Rhino items sell from... Uh, have sold from uh, 32,000 up to 104,000. 104, up from 32,000 to up to $104,000 for just things that are rhino horns. Isn't that nuts? Uh, less than 30,000 rhinos are in the world. So, you know, it's not worth it. We don't need it. We don't really need to do any of those things. We don't need to kill rhinos for the horns. We, we don't. I think there's enough plastic cups to go around. I don't think things taste better in rhino cups. I, I, I've never drank from a rhino cup, but I'll tell you that. I can guarantee it doesn't taste better for, in a rhino cup. <laughs> uh, what's going to happen to the items? That's what I wonder. Are they just held in a museum? What's going to happen to these items? Because guess what? Someone is going to uh, make money off the items regardless, right? Somebody's going to make money of who is going to make money off of it now. Where are they going to go? I would like to know the answers to this. And I'd like to know the answers to many more questions next time on BWN Podcast. No. <laughs> a Dutch man is suspected of money laundering after authorities found $400,000 in his washing machine. The house was registered in the city as, an, as unoccupied. Mm-hmm, of course. Where would you hide your money? Where would you? I would hide it in shoeboxes and luggage. That's all. That's, I'm not creative. Shoeboxes and luggage. And I would be nervous about accidentally turning the machine on. So I would definitely not put it in a washing machine. Yeah, uh, uh, did you guys think about it? You, you know where you'd hide your money? Okay, now, ready, set, comment, or email me, or something. Let me know you're listening. Huh? Huh? Millions of Taiwanese voters will go to the polls to decide whether the island's Olympic athletes should compete under the name Taiwan instead of Chinese Taipei. Now, the athlete. The athletes have been under the banner of Chinese Taipei since 1979. And actually, there was a Chinese Civil War, which ended in 1949. And the nationalists, the people who did not like the government that had won or was taking over, they uh, did not want to live under the Chinese government's rule. So they fled to the island of Taiwan and set up a democracy. So they call it Taiwan. Now, China still considers Taiwan a part of China. And has control politically, even though Taiwan has a president of its own. But, you know, worldwide, people don't want to acknowledge... A lot of countries don't want to acknowledge Taiwan as its own country because they want to still do business with China. Now, that is interesting. I don't know how that functions. I don't know how you can be a country within a country when that country doesn't even want you to be a functioning country. It's interesting. I don't know what the uh, development will be. But all I know is China doesn't play. And that's all I'll say, because I don't need this clip being found 10 years from now. And it sounds like I was dissing China, especially if they control the U.S. Okay, hey, China, just let you know, I wasn't dissing nothing about nobody. Don't take my podcast off the air. I'm, 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 I'm just putting it out there. I'm putting it out there. Amazon is offering free shipping on all orders for the holidays. Yeah, I'm about to make five orders for a pack of five pencils just to take advantage of the shipping. <laughs> no shipping, you know what I mean? No shipping costs. I'm gonna get. I wonder if when they get those orders, if they're just looking at people like, "Oh, I can't believe this stupid guy ordered five packs of five pence. Oh, why aren't you just doing one order? Because that wouldn't be fun. That's why." Best Buy has expanded its toy section in a fight for Toys R Us cust- for Toys R Best Buy has expanded its toys Well, a third. Best Buy has expanded its toy section in a fight for Toys R Us customers. Toys R Us left behind 10.5 billion dollars 
in toy sales. Now, more than 90% of the toys uh, at Best Buy are new to the Best Buy's lineup because they're trying to get all that money that Toys R Us is just leaving out there. Now, uh, it turns out a lot of other companies are also expanding their toy section as well. So who knew there was so much money in the toy business? I didn't know it was like that. I didn't know it was like If I knew it was like that, I would have started making toys a long time ago. I I, I was um I was a toy guy up until maybe fourth grade. Third No, no. I was a toy guy up until first grade. That's when video games started. Super Nintendo, uh PlayStation. Then I was like, you know what? I'm not I don't need the toys. I need the video games. So I my, my toy my toy time ended way early, way early, I think. Uh, when did your toy time end? My, yeah? When when? Mine was first grade, everybody. Yeah. I was like, you know what? Final Fantasy 7. You know what? Mario, Super Mario Bros. Yeah, that was it. That was it. So I guess I'm part of that generation who doesn't really play with toys. But I was playing outside a little bit. I played outside. I played. I'm, I'm not I'm not the, the new millennials. I'm still kind of old school. Two out of three kids with a peanut allergy treated in an experimental study were found to have an improved reaction to peanuts, according to a study published in the New England Journal of Medicine. There were 554 participants, and gradually they were exposed to an allergen. And uh, they started at a lower dose, and two-thirds of them were actually given the allergen. One-third of them were given placebo. And uh, they slowly introduced the allergen, uh, and it actually turned out it was good. It worked. It worked. Slowly introducing the allergen allowed the body to get used to it and not completely attack it, the allergen, even if that negative... Okay, this is what I'm trying to say. Slowly... Slowly introducing the allergen to the body makes it so the body gets used to the allergen so that the body doesn't attack the allergen and the body and destroy everything. You see what I'm saying? doesn't have an allergic reaction. It just maybe attacks the allergen and leaves the rest of the body alone, or it doesn't have such an extensive attack on, uh, on everything. But so I guess the point is it works, and hopefully people with peanut allergies can survive through the world without having to be so afraid. And the truth of the matter is, isn't that generally what was happening in the past? People were exposed to so many allergens early on, and slowly they built an immune system. That's what was happening. Depending on the disease, I'm not trying to say vaccines don't work, so uh, depending on the disease, it works. Some diseases, you need a vaccine, you need the allergen, you need something to be injected into you to make sure you feel uh, your immune system is boosted, okay? Well, that was really serious ending. Hmm? That was very serious. Now, that was Bridey Weekly News for the week. It was. It was. I hope you guys have a good week this week. I hope you had a good week last week. Hey, check me out. It's uh, I got the Bridey Weekly News jokes. It's on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. Check it out. You'll have a good time. It's every day, every single day. I never rest. Consistency is key. CK, consistency is key. Uh, you can also check me out, RodneyBridey.com. You get merchandise. Check out my resume. Look at the short films I've been in, stuff like that. R-O-D-N-E-Y-B-U-R-A-Y-I-D-I dot com. RodneyBriety.com. All right, everybody. Bridey Weekly News Podcast. This has been fun. Peace out. Bridey Weekly News Podcast.